Hello everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us for today's TechSoup for Libraries webinar, Public Tech Instruction Online Job Search Assistance. We'll be using ReadyTalk for our meeting today. Uh, please use the chat in the lower left corner to send questions and comments to any of the presenters. We'll be tracking your questions throughout the webinar, and we'll answer them at designated Q&A sections at the end. Uh, all of your chat comments will only come to the presenters, but if you have comments to share with the entire group, we'll share them back out for you. You don't need to raise your hand in order to uh, uh, share a comment or a question in the chat. Just go ahead and put it right on in there. Now, should you get disconnected during the webinar, you can re reconnect using the same link in your confirmation email. You should be hearing the conference audio through your computer speakers. But if your audio connection is unclear, you can dial in using the phone number uh, in your confirmation email or that was actually just put into the chat by Becky, our assistant, today. Um, if you are having any technical issues, we can try to assist you in the chat. Uh, but you can also call the ReadyTalk support number that's listed on your screen. Now you are being recorded today, uh, and this uh, recording will be archived on the TechSoup website. If you are called away from the webinar, or if you are having connection issues, you can watch a full recording of this webinar later on. You will receive an archive email within 48 hours of the completion of the webinar, and that will include a link to the recording, the PowerPoint slides, and any links used, uh, shared during the session. Now if you happen to be tweeting this webinar, please use the hashtag TechSoup. We have someone from TechSoup live tweeting the event today. So you will see them online. Now TechSoup is an organization that connects nonprofits, charities, libraries, and foundations with tech products and services, as well as with information so that you can make informed decisions about technology. TechSoup has been around since 1987, and since then has distributed over 11 million technology donations to over 200,000 nonprofit organizations. In addition to offering uh, products including the latest versions of software like Microsoft Windows and QuickBooks, TechSoup also offers consulting services. For more information about TechSoup products and services, please visit us online at TechSoup.org and click on Get Products and Services. So now that we've made it through all the housekeeping and introductory bits, I'd like to welcome you once again to today's TechSoup for Libraries webinar, Public Tech Instruction, Online Job Search Assistance. Today's webinar is part of a series on providing public technology instruction in libraries and nonprofits, and is sponsored in part by ReadyTalk. Now my name is Crystal Schimpf, and I will be your host for today's webinar. I'm joined uh, by two fabulous guests today who will be sharing their expertise in the area of helping job seekers. Shannon Distel joins us from the Arlington Heights Memorial Library in Arlington Heights, Illinois, where she has served as business librarian for the past three years. Shannon, will you uh, say hello? Hi everybody. Great. Thanks Shannon. Uh, Stephanie Margosian is the Chief Operating Officer at TRAIL, the company that created Job Scout, an online resource for job seekers designed with libraries and nonprofits in mind. Uh, Stephanie, would you like to say hello? Hi everybody. All right. Hi Stephanie. Thanks for joining us. Um, now assisting us with chat, we have Ginny Meese and Ariel Gilbert-Knight, and also uh, Becky Wiegand, uh, uh, all folks from TechSoup here that make it happen uh, behind the scenes in bringing these webinars to you. So thanks for helping us out with the chat, with Twitter, and with the questions that are happening. So today we'll be covering a few key areas with relation to online job search assistance. First, I'll give a brief overview of this topic, and I'll ask you a few questions about your current experiences with job seekers. Next, Shannon will talk about the types of services libraries and nonprofits can provide to job seekers, including some ideas for using library subscription databases to help job seekers. Shannon will share many of the services they provide at, at their library, and uh, will share uh, the tips that she has learned from her own experience. Um, lastly, Stephanie will give us a demo of the Job Scout uh, app, a new web and mobile app to teach uh, basic tech skills to job seekers. And uh, you can use that app to help them navigate the job search process. Stephanie will show us how libraries and nonprofits can utilize Job Scout to assist patrons who are working on finding a job. Uh, we'll have time for questions and answers at the end of the session and uh, possibly in the middle. Um, but you can submit your questions to us at any time in the chat window. Again, that's in the lower left corner. Um, so you can submit those questions throughout the session. We'll keep track of them and get to as many as we can at the end of the session. If we run out of time, we will follow up with, um, with an email to you with the answer to the question. So uh, we do appreciate your questions and the conversation that happens in the chat. 
I also hope that uh, in today's webinar you find a few new ideas to help you provide services to job seekers, whether you are a library or a nonprofit, that you walk away with a few new things. Um, let's just start by uh, taking a minute and thinking about the needs of our communities um, when it comes to job search assistance. We know that people are looking for jobs. Our unemployment rate has been hovering at 6.7% uh, in the United States. Uh, we know there are not enough jobs. Uh, there is high competition for jobs that are out there. And uh, people have been suffering from changes in the economy. Um, some of our job seekers are unemployed. Some are underemployed. Some may be changing careers. And some may be re-entering the workforce after some type of leave uh, for family or for retirement. Um, many are unexpectedly forced to learn new technologies just to apply for a new job. And they need so much more than just basic computer skills to navigate those job listing websites and format their resumes. Now in our organizations, we might be serving um, many different groups of people, not just job seekers. And we may not be trained to be job search specialists, but we are there uh, to help in, in whatever way we can and in the best way that we can. Now there is no one-size-fits-all way to provide job seeker assistance. But what matters is that you look into the unique needs of your community and find a creative way to meet those needs with whatever limited resources you have. Now um, there are many questions you will want to ask uh, about your community's needs. Um, and, and this is just an example, uh, one that we'd actually like to know about. I'd like you to think about the tech skills, the basic tech skills of your job seekers. And uh, tell us, uh, are job seekers in your, in your community, do they have uh, basic tech skills? And, and you can actually submit your responses by clicking on the radio buttons here uh, to let us know. Do, they, um, do most of the job seekers need more help with basic computer skills? Or do just some of them, you know, maybe not a majority, but some of them do need help with basic tech? Or um, are all of them computer literate? Uh, if you're not sure, there's an opportunity for you to select that response as well. So I'll give you just a, a few more seconds here to select your responses. I can see many responses are coming in. And um, in a minute we will uh, close the poll. One, one thing is that um, it does help if you click Submit after you've selected your response, then um, that response gets sent to us and you can see the, the results on your screen. And uh, I see Michael, you say define basic. And I know that in, in a short question like this that is hard to say, but let's talk about like just the very basic needs to use a uh, computer, you know, getting online, having an email address, really a very basic minimal level, level of computer skills. I can see that uh, the responses have slowed a little bit um, to uh, maybe indicate that everyone who is going to respond is going to. So I'm just going to close the poll in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And I'll close the poll, and now you should be able to see the results. So you know, the majority of you, almost all of you in fact, say at least some help is needed with basic uh, tech skills. Um, and, and only a few of you say that all of your job seekers are um, computer literate, and a few of you say you're, you're not sure. And that's okay too, because sometimes this is now maybe the first time you're thinking of this question. You're going to go out and uh, uh, take a look at your community needs and see if, that's, if, if that is in fact a need. So um, that's something of course we have to consider when we're helping job seekers, that they may not have have those basic skills. Um, so now I'd actually like to um, ask you another question, this one about what you're already offering in, um, in your library or in your nonprofit. Um, what services are you already providing? Uh, this, this question you can select multiple responses because you may be doing several of these things already. Um, or it may be that um, job seeker services are a new arena for you. So go ahead and select um, what options uh, on this list are, represent services you are already providing and go ahead and click Submit. I'll give you a few seconds. There's a long list here. Some of them are um, kind of computer help-based services. Some of them are more specialty services. And some of them just relate to the resources. Um, if you select Other, we'd love to see if you're providing some other type of job seeker service. And you select that option. We'd love to have you type in the chat and tell us what that what that other type of service is. Um, this is a great way for all of us to get ideas, and, and we'll actually share your idea back out with the entire group. So I can see lots of many, many responses are coming in. I'll give you a few more minutes to work your way through this list. And sometimes um, we don't always think of the types of services we're offering until we see a list here. We go, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing a few of these things. So this maybe helps us recognize the work we're already doing. 
And so I, I see that the responses have slowed a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do my, my countdown again in just a second here um, to wrap it up. So um, I'm going to, going to close the poll in uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All right, so I'm going to close the poll. We can see some of the things that are already being offered, and really a wide range here. I like some of the things that I see coming through in the chat, um, translation services, job bulletin boards. Um, also, uh, some uh, libraries uh, are, are creating their own online guides w for people who are looking for jobs. And um, Stephanie has shared one of those, and I think we'll be able to share that back out to the entire group in just a minute here. So I appreciate you sharing your ideas here for the specific things you're doing. And I also just want to recognize and maybe give yourselves a pat on the back for all the things you're already doing. Um, now for those of you if, you, if you aren't offering services yet, well you've come to the right place to get some ideas to start, and I hope you do today. Um, but, but really we can see there's a, a wide range of different services that can be provided in our libraries and nonprofits. Um, there are also a lot of resources available, and I've just listed a few of them here on, on this slide. Um, you can see that Job Scouts listed at the top. We're going to hear from uh, Stephanie, uh, Stephanie Margosian about that resource later on in our um, webinar today. Some other resources are listed there. And I just also want to mention, make sure to look up your local workforce centers and local job listing sites. Uh, consider those as well as you go into um, sharing and creating services for your communities. So now um, we've kind of made it through our overview, and I'm going to turn over the mic to Shannon who is going to tell us about the job services at the Arlington Heights Memorial Library. Shannon? Thank you, Crystal. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for participating in the webinar today. I am Shannon Distel, and as Crystal mentioned, I have been the business librarian at the Arlington Heights Memorial Library for three years. And if you are not familiar with Arlington Heights, we are located about 25 miles from downtown Chicago. We have about 75,000 residents, and approximately 55,000 of those residents are current cardholders. Our building is approximately 132,000 square feet, and we have about 270,000 items in our circulating collection. So that will just give you a little overview of, of the size of Arlington Heights Library. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is the job services and the resources that we have here at Arlington Heights Library. This first slide that you're going to see is the library job services, and you're seeing a snapshot there of our digital studio which was created about a year and a half ago when we did a major remodel of our building. Now the first bullet point you see is for our Job Seeker series. <clears throat> that was begun in 2010 by a very generous grant from the Arlington Heights Rotary Club. And we continue to partner with them to provide programming on a monthly basis for job seekers and those who need career assistance. You do not have to be a resident to participate in the Job Seeker Series. I was delighted to see how many of you provide one-on-one -on -one appointments. That's a very big part of what I do. One-on-one -on -one appointments here are with Myself, you can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with our tech staff. And I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, a little bit further down. We're going to see a slide for our resume reviews, but those are one-on-one -on -one as well. Now our digital studio is incredibly popular. We have a lot of software in there. You can create a video. You can work on an online portfolio. You could take a headshot. Uh, it's just a wonderful resource and uh, extremely popular with our residents. Now this snapshot here, this is the slide for the Arlington Heights Library Job Resources. And that slide is one side of our business center. Our business center was created approximately four years ago. And it is the location of many of our business programs and our job programs, also classes, uh, our reference and business and job circulating collections. There are also five computers in there, and we have a TV screen that runs all hours that we are open. Um, we also have databases that are subscription, and our residents can access them from home, and anybody in the library can access them from the computers within the library. We have approximately 55 computers in our library. And other job resources that we have is community outreach, which I am very, very active in. 
I go to a lot of career programming events at local churches and community colleges. I participate in job fairs, and I do a lot of networking with the local chamber of commerce, local businesses, and other individuals who help our job and career seekers in the community. Right here, this is a screenshot of the Arlington Heights Library's Jobs and Careers page. And if you want to look at this live, the website address is www.ahml.info forward slash research forward slash jobs. And you'll see here there is a resume help section, and if our residents click on that red hyperlink, they can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one appointment with one of our two resume reviewers. Also, the career research portion of this webpage links to some of our more useful databases, which I'm going to talk about shortly. And then we have a list there of local resources. And each of those resources I partner with, and they are very, very active in the state of Illinois and active in our area. You'll also see a small calendar box on the side which lists resume reviews and open appointment times for upcoming dates. And the Meet with a Specialist box, that is where they can click on the appointment form link to set up an appointment with me. And I will uh, talk about who our resume reviewers are shortly. So databases, I am going to briefly talk about four of our databases today. We have approximately 90 databases at the library, many business and databases that we consider useful for our job and career seekers. I'm going to talk about four, Gail Courses, Lynda.com, ReferenceUSA, and Tutor.com. And it looks like from the poll, over 60 of you had uh, mentioned that you also subscribe to databases. So you may be familiar with some of these and others that are here in this small list you might not be familiar with. Gale Courses is formerly Learn for Life. That's an instructor-led six-week course. Lynda.com are video tutorials, Reference USA, which most people consider strictly a business database is actually a wonderful resource for our job seekers. And then Tutor.com, which many people only considering for students when actually they have a wonderful career resource section of that database. So I'm going to show you some, some screenshots. Now this is Learn for Life, and this is now called Gale Courses. And we just subscribed to this database about a year ago. Now Learn for Life are instructor-led six-week courses. And when you sign up for the courses, when you complete the six weeks, you get a letter that, uh, that certifies that you have completed the course. I'm actually taking two courses myself that started on April 16th. And there are two different lessons per week. There is also a discussion board where you can talk with your fellow students and also connect with your instructor. And it's proven to be incredibly popular. Now this screenshot here is a number of the job-related courses that you can take through Learn for Life. Now when we first subscribed to this database, it was limited to only five courses a year. We have now opened that up to unlimited courses for anybody who would like to sign up to take the courses through Learn for Life. It's wonderful. This is lynda.com, which many of you may be familiar with. And lynda.com, we have had a subscription here at the library for a number of years. And a couple of years ago, they removed the access to remote access for lynda.com for, for us. And that proved incredibly difficult. We now have remote access back for this database, and it has it's just been absolutely wonderful. Now these are video tutorials on literally hundreds of topics. I cannot stress enough how much this is used by our job and career seekers. Everything for how to create a resume, to interviewing tips, to uh, updating their skills on software, um, to management tips. It's just wonderful. And I'm going to show you another screenshot here. This is an example of one of the video tutorials within lynda.com. And this is Job Hunting Online. 
Now you'll see on the left side that the entire tutorial is 1 hour and 56 minutes. But what I particularly like is that it's broken down into small chapters. So many of our job seekers just want to go in and ref refresh their skills on something something that they might have forgotten, such as how to do a mail merge or one particular aspect of how to use Excel. So incredibly popular, and I'm hoping that lynda.com will continue to allow us remote access to this database because I, I, use it, I use it on a consistent basis with our job and career seekers. It's also one of the few places that um, has QuickBooks classes and uh, Google AdWords tutorials and free software instead of our residents having to go to the local community college to pay for those classes. Now this is Tutor.com, which many of you may be familiar with. You might have used it yourself. Your children might have used it. Your library customers may have used it. Most people think of this as test prep and study resources, but they actually have excellent resources for those who are looking for job assistance and those who are looking to change careers. Now you can actually connect with a live tutor on Tutor.com. Here at our library, our tutors are, the tutors are available from 3 p.m. until 10 p.m. in the evening. And I'm going to show you a screenshot of the Career Resources section, which is this slide here. And it's under Topic for Adult Services, and then Subject Job Resources, and then Subtopic, which would be if you needed help with a resume. You can actually upload your resume to a tutor, and they will edit it for you. You can share a cover letter with them. You can get interviewing tips. They can help you with the job boards. And it is absolutely a wonderful resource that's not just for students. This is Reference USA, which is hands down probably the database that I use the most. I use it with the businesses in the community, and I use it every day with our job seekers as well. And you'll see in the available databases in the middle of that screen capture, the first bullet point is U.S. businesses, the second one is U.S. jobs and internships. How I use this with our job seekers is we often create targeted lists of companies that they might be looking at either because of the size of the company, because of the geographic area, because of the standard industry classification code, sometimes because they are the, competitive, the competitor to a company that they worked for previously. And the U.S. Jobs and Internships database within Reference USA actually pulls in job postings that have been posted on Indeed.com. Let me show you that screenshot here. So this is a result for doing a simple search in the U.S. Jobs for marketing, for marketing positions. And it pulled up over 1,000 results in the Chicago metropolitan area. Now the hyperlink for the job title will take you to the job posting on Indeed.com. And the hyperlink under Company Name will click you to the company record within Reference USA so that the customer can do further research. Excellent, excellent database. Now our resume reviews, um, I had seen a chat come through about who our resume reviewers are. We have two resume reviewers. Uh, the resume reviews are available for Arlington Heights residents only. And they are limited to three resume review appointments in a calendar year, two within six months or three in a year. Now our resume reviewers, we have a man and a woman. Our man's name is Rich. He has a background in human resources, and he does appointments on Tuesday and Thursday evenings. Appointments are one hour in length, and he does them from either 6 to 7 or 7 to 8 p.m. Our other resume reviewer, her name is Julie, and she previously worked at our local unemployment office, and she also has a background in human resources. And she does appointments from 3 to 4 and 4 to 5 on Wednesday afternoons. They have been with us for years. I absolutely think they are two of the most wonderful people I've ever met. And they also started a LinkedIn group to connect the people who have come through our resume review program. And since January 1st of 2014, we've had nine of our customers land jobs. And a lot of that is because of the success of the resume 
uh, review and also because of the further networking that goes on with the LinkedIn group. So we used to have a job search support group here that met on Thursday, and when those numbers started to decline, um, we tried this LinkedIn group, and it's been very, very successful. And our resume reviewers are paid. That budget comes out of our library programming budget. They are not volunteers. Now one-on-one -on -one appointments, uh, these are done in an appointment room. Uh, that picture there is actually my assistant Julie and our genealogy librarian Michael. Um, but I wanted to give you an idea of uh, what our appointment room looks like. And this is where I do appointments um, for our small businesses and also for our job and career seekers. Um, again, like I said when I was talking about the databases, we do a lot of company research. Um, sometimes they want to know what the credit rating is of the company or how many employees are at the company or if they are able to get to the company using public transportation. We create a lot of business lists in Reference USA, and we also use corporate affiliations um, and also LexisNexis to make lists for our job and career seekers. I do a lot of appointments with LinkedIn. I can't even tell you how many appointments I do on LinkedIn and also on how to use social media in the job search. Um, I help people with personal websites. Um, we check to see what their professional profile is like online. I have them Google themselves uh, just to see what's out there about them. Some people are setting up personal websites um, more because they are looking for a job. Others are using it as a portfolio or because they've started to start to they've decided to start a small business. And then the online job search uh, that is incredibly popular, helping them to use the job boards, helping them to use Twitter um, for the job search, which believe it or not is a wonderful resource for our job seekers. And before I uh, go to question and answer, I wanted to give you some tips because when I took this job, um, I didn't have any experience working with job seekers. My background was as a technology resources librarian. So when I took this position here at Arlington Heights, the librarian before me had been here for 20 years. So I definitely came in and redefined the job based on what I was seeing in the community and also what what my greatest skills were with helping them. The very first thing that I did, I got into the community. I went to the unemployment office. I went to the local churches that had job groups. I went to networking events, and I went to job fairs. I had a table for the library. I passed out my business card. I worked with our marketing department to create handouts and a one-page flyer so that people would know that we could assist them at the library. I also speak frequently. Any place that somebody would like me to speak, I'll go. The village hall, a local church, the local college, the local, the local career center at the college is a great resource for us. Also, uh, locate your free resources. And there are so many wonderful resources out there, including YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is one of the resources that I use the most. Um, there's also GFC Learn Free, which is another website that we use, and then resources in the communities that are free uh, by partnering with some of these community organizations has been wonderful for us. Learn social media. That's another tip because you're going to get a lot of questions about how to use LinkedIn or if Twitter is going to be good for the job search or can I post this on Facebook or is my prospective employer going to see me on social media? And some of you may recognize um, Ted Lang there if you were a Love Boat fan. Uh, that is Ted Lang who was the bartender Isaac Washington on Love Boat. And I often describe what I do here at the library as being like a bartender. You listen, you listen, and you listen. And I listen a lot. And sometimes our job seekers just want you to listen, and uh, sometimes they actually want you to, to sit down with them and figure out the resources. And as long as you can be as patient as a bartender and just keep your ears open, you'll be very, very successful. So I believe, Crystal, we're in the question and answer time now. Is that right? That's correct. It's time. Uh, we have just a, a minute or two for a couple of quick questions. And we've been getting a lot in, and we'll also have time at the end to follow up on some of these questions. Um, but a, a couple of the quick ones. Um, who does the, the somebody had asked, uh, who does the headshots? Is it library staff or is it volunteers? My assistant, uh, Julie, is a professional photographer. She owns her own small business on the side, and she takes the headshots. We did a program last year that was headshots for adults, and in June we are doing a headshots program for recent college graduates. But we've also had some of our digital studio staff, if Julie is not here, go in and set up the camera, and we've taken pictures ourselves, and we've also used cell phones. 
Great. Great. So many different options there. You don't have yeah. to be a professional photographer to help people out in that area for sure, but nice that you've got one on staff. Um, I, I just have another person who asked, how, how do you use YouTube? Maybe you could tell us a little bit how you use YouTube to help job seekers. You know, there's a lot of videos out there about how to write a resume or interviewing tips. And one of the best channels that I use, it's called The Interview Guys, and it's kind of in a cartoon format. And they do very short videos that are clever and light and quick, and they're fun. Everything from resume writing to tips on the job search, and it's it's not very serious because it is in like a cartoon format, but for some of our residents who cannot access our databases remotely, um, either because of issues at home or because they don't have Internet access or because even they're not our residents, I refer them to YouTube to channels like the Interview Guide so that they can watch videos um, at home or on the go or on their tablet or on their cell phone that have some job and career tips for them. There's also um, videos on YouTube on how to use our databases. We've created them and other libraries have created them as well, such as how to use Reference USA and how to use lynda.com. Great, great. And we're getting a lot of uh, very specific questions uh, with regards to the way you use different databases, and some of them we may have time for later. I want to assure everybody that if you are asking questions and we don't answer it live on the webinar, we will follow up with an email because some of them uh, might take a little bit more time for us to answer, but we will get back to you. So please continue sending your questions. Um, uh, Steph uh, Shannon, just one, one question before I move on to Stephanie's section. Um, is, is there still a little bit of um, uh, questions coming in about the res resume reviewers. And can you just clarify for us, um, you know, are the resume reviewers employees of the library, or are they contracted, or are they volunteers? Uh, just as brief as you can explain that. Our resume reviewers are not library staff. We have contracted with them. We do a year contract at a time. They sign a letter of agreement, and again, their budget does come out of our library programming budget. We pay them $30 an hour. We have a set number of resume reviews that they do a month, and that is their contract. And they are absolutely wonderful. We have had free resume walk-in workshops here at the library, and we organize those with volunteer resume reviewers. But these two resume reviewers are contract, and they are here weekly. Great. Thank you. And that is different than the one-on-one -on -one appointments with uh, library, librarians or library staff, correct? That is correct. No staff okay. at the library will do resume reviews. All right, good. I think that helps clarify that point that we were having some questions about. So, so Shannon, we may have some more questions for you at the end, but for right now I want to give Stephanie some time uh, to talk about Job Scout. And so, um, so thank you again, Shannon, for sharing. Uh, Stephanie is uh, going to tell us about uh, uh, Job Scout, which is a free online resource for job seekers that can be used in uh, public libraries and nonprofits. Uh, Stephanie. Hi everybody. Thank you Crystal, and um, thank you everyone for joining us on the webinar today and uh, listening to me talk about Job Scout. Um, so my name is Stephanie Margozzi, and I am the Chief Operating Officer at TRAIL. And um, TRAIL is an education technology company. Um, it, it's an acronym. Our name is an acronym. It stands for Technology Resources and Internet Literacy. And um, we build uh, educational platforms that teach people uh, digital literacy skills. Um, so what do we mean by um, digital literacy skills. Well, digital literacy can mean a lot of things. Um, it could mean basic computer skills um, like typing, um, mousing, um, being able to turn on a computer. Um, and it can also mean um, you know, how you navigate software um, and how you navigate the Internet. And when we talk about digital literacy, we mean those skills that are necessary to um, use the Internet um, uh, sufficiently. Um, so why do we build these tools um, for uh, people to learn Internet skills? Isn't everybody online? And uh, judging from the poll results, that we took earlier um, in the webinar, I think I'm speaking to the choir when I lay out the issue that no, everybody is not 
currently online. Um, and, and the numbers are shocking, actually. Um, according to Pew Research, there are 60 million people in the United States who still do not know how to use the Internet. Um, and that number surpasses 5 billion people worldwide. Um, you know, we're based in San Francisco, and here we get a lot of resistance when um, we talk about the issue. Uh, there's, there's a lot of disbelief that there's that many people who don't know how to use the Internet. And it's shocking, but it's true. Um, and so why is this so important? I mean, you know, we existed um, for a long time before the Internet came around. We got along just fine. Well, the fact is that the Internet has fundamentally changed our lives and the way uh, we interact with each other, the way we interact with society. More and more resources are moving online, and um, these are becoming necessary skills um, to be marketable um, job seekers in the workforce. Um, digital literacy is now starting to affect all industries and even industries that we might not traditionally think digital literacy skills were important for, such as hospitality, retail, dry cleaning, um, automotive, and other trades. Uh, one of the, our favorite stories that we like to tell is about a company here in San Francisco called Laundry Locker. Um, and Laundry Locker is a dry cleaning company. Uh, it's the kind of company that comes and picks up your laundry from you at a specific site and then delivers it back to you when it's all done. Um, and traditionally, you don't think of these kinds of companies as um, being automated, but th this one in particular is um, very much automated, and it's very much dependent on um, the Internet. Uh, everything runs off of an iPad from you know, the laundry line to uh, the intake people to uh, the folks out on the street um, delivering and picking up laundry. So it's very important for uh, their employees at Laundry Locker in particular to have a variety of skills, but of utmost importance are digital literacy skills. So um, Job Scout was is or is our first platform, and um, it was born out of a partnership between Trail, um, the California State Library. Um, um, the iCalifornia campaign and the Link Americas Foundation. Um, and the California um, State Library was um, facing a, a unique problem around um, the time of year around 2008 when the recession, 2009 when the recession was at its peak. Um, they had a lot of people coming in to the library looking for job, um, job resources, which in and of itself was not a new problem. Um, but there was another layer compounding that issue um, in so much as those, um, a lot of these uh, people had been newly laid off, um, did not have any digital literacy skills, and were unfamiliar with the new landscape of trying to find a job. Uh, so there were a lot of people coming in looking for job resources, but then they needed that extra help of um, needing help to get online, and so they needed some digital literacy education. Uh, and so the librarian was thinking, you know, as a state librarian uh, at the time, Stacey Aldrich, um, she wanted to come up with a creative solution to um, this problem. And so she was thinking, maybe there's a way that we can um, build an online self-led education platform where people can get the digital literacy skills that they need um, to have a successful job search. And um, thus was born Job Scout. Um, so our solution was Job Scout. Uh, it is a completely self-led uh, online education tool. Um, we often joke around and say it was either the, the best idea that <laughs> we ever jumped on, uh, or it was going to be, um, a, you know, a little bit difficult to implement. But this has been um, incredible. We've had an incredible response to Job Scout. Um, those folks that have our users um, have been incredibly happy with it. Um, and so, um, you know, we are here today. Uh, we're available in state li or in libraries all across California, and in organizations um, across the country as well. Um, so. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little overview of Job Scout today. So we're going to take a quick look at the platform so everybody can get a sense of what we have to offer. So I'm going to start my desktop sharing here in just a second. See if this works. It looks like I'm sharing my desktop with everybody.
So Job Scout is um, an online resource, and it is completely free to the end user. Um, so it's available 24-7 online. Um, whoever logs on to myjobscout.org can sign up for an account for free. So I'm going to log into my account. You do need to sign up for an account to um, use the resource, and that is because we need to have a way um, it's to save your progress through the site so that you can and save you know whatever data um, that you enter into so um, that you can go ahead and come back and uh, complete lessons and so on. And it looks like my network is dragging just a little bit. Oh, here we go. Um, so you should be looking right now at the Job Scout dashboard. We did uh, initially design for first-time Internet users. Uh, and this means that we, our goal was to build a platform that was one, inviting, and two, easy to use. So Job Scout was built so it feels like somebody is sitting next to the user, kind of guiding them through some of these resources. And so the first thing we do is try to guide the user through our own site. So the first thing the user is presented with when they log on to Job Scout is the Job Scout dashboard. Um, and at the top of the dashboard is a list of things that you can do with Job Scout. Um, you can learn about the Internet. You can update your resume. We have a resume builder. Um, we have tool, other tools like a job search function and an application management tool we call the One Stop Job Shop. We also have an internal social network on Job Scout. We um, employ a learn and apply model. So we like to give our users the opportunity to apply the skills they're learning in their lessons directly on the site. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at one of our lessons. So our lessons are broken up into a variety of different units. We kind of go um, through levels. Um, so we go from the basics to some more advanced skills. We cover everything from browsers and email and Internet etiquette to social networks like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter for the specific purpose of finding a job. Also more quote unquote traditional um, job resources online like CareerBuilder, Craigslist, Simply Hired. Um, and then we also cover micro entrepreneurial sites like um, Etsy, TaskRabbit, um, and other sites that uh, Elance that allow users um, to you know make money and participate in the economy in a slightly different way. And we will be expanding those offerings, the micro entrepreneurial lesson offerings, very soon. So we're going to take a peek at one of our lessons. This is one of our. Um, vocabulary lessons kind of getting used to the language of the Internet. Right now we're uh, running on a text-based system. We don't employ um, video because many of our um, partner organizations in California and um, also nationwide, they work on a variety of different kind of technological infrastructures. So we have organizations using our product that um, are on dial-up, but also um, on very fast broadband. We wanted a system that would um, accommodate all of those different setups. So um, we have text here. We accompany that text with screenshots. And then when a user is done with the content, they are engaged in an activity. And these activities are designed to allow the user to review the content they just saw. So when a user has successfully finished a lesson, they earn a badge. And those badges live on um, the dashboard. Our badges are one of our most uh, popular features. Um, it's a great motivator tool for our users. And I'll click into a badge so you can see it. Now in addition to lessons, we also offer tools on Job Scout for um, job seekers. Our resume builder is one of our uh, most popular tools. So we have um, developed a fill in the blank template for our users. And um, they put all the information that they need for a comprehensive resume into this template. And then we provide a PDF, um, pre-formatted PDF version of their resume that they can either save on a thumb drive um, on a desktop or they can print out um, and have a hard copy of. 
We also offer an application management tool. And so this application management tool is called the One Stop Job Shop, which you are looking at right now. Um, we break down the um, application process into four different steps. Um, we allow the user to read a job description that they have saved off of our job search feature which we'll take a look at. Find a contact email off of that listing and enter it in. And then send the resume that they built in our resume builder directly from our site to the listing contact. And the resume is sent with a customized email, um, a preformatted customized email that's sent out from our system. But it looks like it's sent directly from the user. And we pull information from both the user's resume and from the listing um, to make sure that it looks like it was something sent directly from the user and not something that's automated. We also have a calendar feature that allows users to keep track of interviews. So you can schedule the date and time. We're also available on mobile and iOS and Android. And on the mobile phone, this calendar feature syncs up with the calendar on the phone, so either with iCal or with Google Calendar. So in addition to our One Stop Job Shop and our application management tool, we have um, a job listings job search feature that we um, offer for to our users. And, um, and this we is uh, used in conjunction with simplyhired.com. So we share an API with Simply Hired, which is a job listings aggregator, which allows our users to look for a variety of different jobs all over the nation and all over the world actually. We use Simply Hired because it is an aggregator and it pulls from um, sites like Craigslist, like Career Builder. Um, it also pulls from government websites and allows um, its subscribers to post um, job listings directly on the site. So it offers a variety of different options. Um, and then finally is our social network. Um, our social network is, is pretty pared down. Um, we do not allow our users to self-identify on the social network other than their Job Scout username. They can send private messages to each other. They can also share their badges. And they can um, search for people based on location, the kind of work that they are looking for, um, or the last lesson that they, they took. Um, again, this is uh, an opportunity for our users to apply some of the skills that they are learning on our site in regards to um, you know, social networking and online communication. So that is the Job Scout platform kind of in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to try and turn off my screen sharing here and go back to our initial presentation. Uh, give me – oh, looks like somebody already did that for me. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> so um, as I mentioned, Job Scout has a variety of lessons on the site. We actually have 39 lessons to date, and then we will be expanding those offerings um, within the calendar year. Um, we have mapped all of those lessons to the California um, Digital Literacy Framework. California is the only state in the nation that has adopted um, a Digital Literacy Framework. Um, and it was uh, created um, at the state level actually with help by the Link Americas Foundation. In addition to um, the user-facing platform, we do also offer data analytics. And that is offered on a subscription basis for organizations who, that are interested. We can also um, create new content and um, white label uh, versions of Job Scout for subscription organizations um, that are interested. And um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our um, success to date. Um, TRAIL was recognized this year um, by Phoenix um, for our educational application. Um, and we are also statewide in um, the California Library. So you can find us in libraries across the state. Um, and we are partnering with organizations now um, across the nation and um, other organizations besides libraries in California. Um, so 
That was Job Scout. Um, I wanted to thank you all again for having me um, today. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions, and feel free to contact me um, if you're interested in um, taking another look at Job Scouts or if you have questions about what it has to offer. Great. Thanks, Stephanie, for sharing that. I mean, we really only got to get a, a very small glimpse inside the tool right now, and we have quite a few questions coming in. And, and I want to get to some of the ones I think we can answer the, the uh, most easily, I should say, and that um, also may be questions many people are ha having. So you know, there's this mention that Job Scout also has a mobile app. Is that um, available for download um, and on what platform? So um, the app is available for download. Um, it is um, available for iOS and on Android. So you can access it in um, the App Store or in the Google Play Store. Great, great. And I uh, also just had a, a question about that API with um, uh, Simply Hired. Was that an open source API that you were able to use to connect with their information, or did you have to contract with them with a fee to get it? Or maybe you can't that tell us that, a, but it was an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's a good question. That's another reason why we use Simply Hired, because Simply Hired does have an open API. So it's open source, um, okay. which is a great resource. Great, great. Um, and, and then um, you know, there's, there are people asking some questions. Uh, I'm going to try to group them all together here about you know, um, people maybe needing help with the different logins, and, and sometimes maybe it being frustrating for people to have an additional login, or people maybe not having all of the tech, tech skills um, and, uh, to, to create that login. And then also maybe tying into that the assistance that maybe a library or nonprofit staff could help provide. So how do you address that frustration um, since your tool also has a login? Uh, absolutely. So we work on a train-the-trainer model. So when an organization first starts using Job Scout, um, or they subscribe to Job Scout, um, we host a training with the staff, um, show them how to use the tool, show them how to log on, and um, explain these issues to them about, about first-time users so that they can be available to um, first-time users in their organizations, act as anchor institutions, and help um, those um, users get started for the first time. And that's about a five to ten minute process. After that, we found that users are usually able to take the reins um, and continue on, you know, their discovery path on on their own. Great. So it sounds like you're giving some support to um, libraries and organizations that are agreeing to use the tool, and then um, those libraries then provide the support to people to get them started, and then they can become pretty self-sufficient after that for the most part. So, yes. Great. And, so, um, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say is one of the other things we found is that um, libraries have used the tool in a workshop setting also. Um, so it's great to use in a workshop setting. They run through some of the lessons um, in person, and that also gets users started. Great. All right. And then I have one other question that's come in um, specific to Job Scout. You know, you have this custom resume tool and, and a way for people to directly submit their um, resumes to a job listed through Simply Hired. But if they um, want to apply for something that's not listed on Simply Hired, is there a way for them to use that same resume uh, to apply for that job either through the Job Scout tool or by downloading it um, and submitting elsewhere? So they can download the resume that is created for them um, in our resume builder. They can save it to a thumb drive. They can also print a hard copy or save it to a desktop. Um, in terms of our application management tool, the One Stop Job Shop, all of the tools on Job Scout are integrated with each other. Um, so since we use Simply Hire for our job search tool, um, those are the only listings that can be used through our um, application management tool right now. So um, those are the only um, listings that a user can apply directly for on the site. Great, great. And, um, and still some more questions trickling in. I think this uh, uh, will be the last one for Job Scout, and then I want to bounce one back to Shannon as our library expert on the panel today. Um, but uh, can you just again tell us uh, what the cost is to use Job Scout, and, and who can use it? Like, Is it limited to a particular audience, or uh, is, it, is it wide open? 
So um, Job Scout is the, u there's the user facing platform on Job Scout is available for free. So anybody can go and log on and create an account. Um, we are also available in Spanish. So if you go to myjobscout.org slash es, um, you can also use the tool in Spanish. Um, so organizations subscribe to Job Scout to use Compass, which is our um, data analytics tool. And that tool allows um, organizations to see how um, Job Scout is being used in their um, in their organizations, basically by their clients, um, and we provide high level data in terms of you know how many lessons are being uh, um, completed, uh, how many resumes are being sent out, etc. Um, and also that subscription um, provides support from our team. So that subscription allows us to come in and do those trainings that I was talking about. Um, but if you just want to go ahead and, and, and poke around on Job Scout and um, start creating um, profiles, you can go ahead and do that. Great. Yeah, so uh, just to, to kind of summarize that, Job Scout is a free tool that's available. There's an option to get some additional benefits with a cost, but um, there's, there's not a, 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 a limit to anybody who can use it online. So, um, and that can be for libraries or nonprofits or even individuals can use that. So, um, so thanks for clarifying that. Um, so Shannon, I want to send one question back to you. And we actually have, have just, um, uh, just a minute or so to answer this question. But do you have any um, last words of wisdom for any of the nonprofits or libraries that are listening? Um, one of the big questions that has really come up uh, is, is how do we um, you know, provide the assistance, that one-on-one -on -one assistance, and how do we help connect people to these tools? So maybe you could speak to that a little bit in your uh, closing statement here. Sure. My advice is to definitely know what your community needs, and that, that begins by getting out into the community, whether it's meeting with the local unemployment office and finding out what your unemployment rate is, uh, what kind of services are offered at the local community college and churches and other kind of nonprofits in the area. And then you just really have to find a way to work with library management to open up your, your time if they will allow you to do one-on-one -on -one appointments. I know I had to work with library management to decide how much time I could do on desk, how much time I could do speaking in the community, how much time I could do with doing one-on-one -on -one appointments. And you don't have to be an expert on everything. That was the very first thing that I learned was that I wasn't going to be an expert on LinkedIn, but I would be able to connect people to LinkedIn experts. I would either have them come in and speak at the library or watch YouTube uh, videos or use our databases. And if they aren't our residents, you also have to know resources in the community that are free or that are available for anybody. And it worked. And, and then again, listen to what they want because I do, I do see a lot of repeat customers and I, I do see um, you know, it does fluctuate with how the economy is, how the, how the village is doing where I live, how the state of Illinois is doing. Um, you know, there's a lot of different factors. You just have to kind of stay up on it as best you can and ask for help. I ask for help from my neighboring libraries, from librarians throughout the country, from ALA, from ILA. Um, you just have to start forming some partnerships and, and ask because I'm here to help. Please contact me if you have any questions at all. Great. Thank you so much. And, and we, do, we are just about out of time, and we have so many questions. We'll be following up with you afterwards. And our uh, presenters have uh, agreed to help answer some of those questions, so we'll be getting back to you. And you'll also be receiving an archive of uh, this webinar, including a recording and the PowerPoint slides and all of the links and ideas that were included. So you'll be getting that by the end of the week. Um, now I'll be giving you at the end of this, if you'll stay on the line, you'll get a chance to give us some feedback about this webinar that always helps us uh, uh, improve those that we offer in the future. So please stay on the line to take that. But first I just wanted to mention a couple of the upcoming webinars that might be of interest to libraries and those nonprofits that are on the line. One on uh, May 1st, which is tomorrow, on uh, make, making your grant request sparkle. And then one on May 28th, which will talk about the Summer Food Service Program and a special app that is being used to help direct youth to uh, meals, so helping youth to find a meal. And that will be on May 28th, and you'll be hearing more about that soon. I also just want to uh, take a moment to thank Ready
BuddyTalk, our webinar sponsor today. Uh, thank you also to Shannon and Stephanie for sharing your expertise and understanding of this subject. And uh, uh, thank you for, uh, for, to all of you for taking time to come and learn something new with us today. I hope you have a few new ideas to take back uh, to your library or to your nonprofit. Uh, please again take a minute to tell us what you think about the survey that should pop up as soon as the uh, webinar here closes. And I just want to say thank you. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.